Welcome to another edition of Eye on Education. I'm your host, Ed Leishas, and our guests today are the presidents of the graduating classes of Bishop Gurdon, Nashua North, and Nashua South. We're pleased to have with us from uh, Bishop Gurdon, Peter Goshian from Nashua North, Kate Connolly, and from Nashua South, Asma Akbar. Congratulations on your achievements and your graduations. And now it's on to college. And Kate, where will you be going to school? Um, I'll be starting at UC Berkeley in the fall. And how is it you came to uh, select UC Berkeley and what are you majoring in? Um, so I knew that I wanted to go pretty far away and my dad and I were able to go out and visit and I loved the campus and fell in love with their programs. As of now, I'm undeclared, but I'm interested in political economics. Okay. And Asma, what about you? Where are you be going to school and how did you make that selection? Uh, I will be going to Suffolk University in Boston and I wanted to be in the city uh, as well as study law and public policy. So they had a great law program and a law scholars program. So I decided Suffolk University. All right, and Peter, how about you? Where are you going to school and what made you make that selection? So I'll be going to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, and what made me choose that um, as my college for the next four years was that um, Embry-Riddle is one of the top flight schools in the country. Um, they're notorious for um, producing great and skillful pilots, um, as well as their connections. Um, after college, they almost ensure that you'll end up um, somewhere in the flight industry. Um, and with a good job for the um, remainder of your career with great connections. So what got you interested in flying? Um, when I was young, um, I would go out and visit my grandmother in Chicago. Um, me and my family would leave out of Manchester um, and fly into Midway. And just the experience of going through the airport um, with my family, getting on the, the big airliners, um, kind of just instilled the want um, in me to fly. Um, and I'm currently flying now, um, trying to get my private pilot's license. So um, I'm in the process already of pursuing that dream. And, and Kate, you said you haven't uh, made a uh, commitment yet into your course studies, but uh, are you leaning towards anything in particular just now or not? Um, yeah, so I'm interested in political economics. It's one of their majors and I'm debating between that or going um, more of a humanities route with English or gender studies. Any thoughts of down the road, perhaps running for an office or would you uh, rather be on a, on a staff uh, level? Um, I think more on a staff level, but I would consider running for something. Good for you. And Asma, what about you? What's drawn you to law? Well, I've been very involved in democratic politics in New Hampshire. Um, I was the chair of the New Hampshire High School Democrats for the past two years um, involved with like the New Hampshire Democratic Party. And um, I just am inspired like with political science and public policy and just social issues. And um, I'd love to become like an immigration lawyer to help um, people coming into the US. And yeah, I was just very inspired by that. So what drew you to politics initially? Um, just seeing the need for some communities um, and the way you can get to those needs is advocating through politics and legislation. Um, I've been doing that since freshman year, um, knocking doors, uh, voter outreach, stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of prepared you to run for uh, class president and the uh, common denominator between the three of you is, is that uh, while you haven't all served for four years, you have each served during the last two years, which brought the pandemic and uh, a whole different way of going to high school and getting your education. And uh, Pete, uh, Girton perhaps uh, was different from the other schools in the area in that the, they were pretty much open and functioning for those who wish to attend in person. Uh, what challenges did that present for you as class president? 
So um, you're right, we were um, in person for the majority of the year. Um, however, we weren't always all together. Um, our school administration put together a cohort system um, based off of geographics of where the students all lived. Um, so while well, yes, everyone was in school at least once a week, um, actually, however, for the majority of the time, it was either three to five days a week. Um, kids weren't always in the building together. So planning activities around um, scaled back capacity, I guess, um, was rather difficult. Um, however, we tried to incorporate, um, so for instance, spirit weeks, um, we would have dress up days for every day of the week. And <clears throat> whether you were home or online, we encouraged everyone to, um, sorry, home or in person, we'd encourage them to dress up in the spirit um, for the day and um, just kind of stay involved in the community um, all the way throughout the year. I mean, we had kids that were fully remote for the entire year and we're still very active members of our community and participating in all sorts of activities. Um, Dave, what about you? How challenging was it for you as the class president to uh, keep your class members engaged, informed, and then uh, go through the, uh, the usual senior activities from graduation? Um, so it was definitely difficult. I know when we moved into hybrid, I stayed remote the entire year, which made it a little bit more difficult not being able to be in person with everybody else. But um, using like Google Classroom or Instagram or other forms of communication was definitely helpful. We hosted like virtual spirit weeks throughout the year. We did a virtual scavenger hunt. And I think doing things like that helped people like stay connected to one another, even when we were, when we were at home. And just being able to have prom, I think anything we would have done would have been really fun for everyone because we haven't been able to have things like that. So with prom and we did a field day and with graduation, I think people were just dying to have it. So anything that we did was really exciting and it went really well, but it was definitely challenging throughout the year with um, not really having definitive answers and having to plan things more last minute than usual because of COVID. We didn't know what was allowed and it ended up working out in the end, but that was definitely a challenge. And what about you, Asma? Uh, same questions uh, to the challenges. And uh, did, did you feel that it wasn't the same as it could have been? Or what was done? Did that kind of fill in the blanks? Yeah. So um, in March, back, back in 2020 of March, we had two events planned, J-Prom, Junior Prom, and um, a faculty feud game, which was going to be like family feud with like students and faculty. We were so ex excited. We planned it with our uh, junior council group that um, we organized. And then all of a sudden, we got that announcement. It was like no school for a week. And that week we had all the events. Um, and then all of a sudden it was no school for the next year. We're all remote. Um, so that was kind of like the rock in the way of our activities that we were finally going to do as a class. Um, so throughout the pandemic, um, it was kind of hard getting people to get involved, but we tried our best. Um, what I did was created a online merchandise store. Um, I designed some sweatshirts, uh, t-shirts, things like that. And I opened it up to the class uh, as like a t-shirt design contest. And um, we kind of just uploaded all the designs. We raised over a thousand dollars through that as of right now. Um, the way we kind of kept people involved was through our social medias. Um, on Instagram, I would try to post a few times a week, uh, reminding people of things like trying to do some challenges. Um, and then um, when we went remote, um, I mean, when we went hybrid, I was remote. So it was kind of hard to keep up with what the teachers were doing, but I still went into school trying to figure out what to do for prom, what to do for graduation, stuff like that. So we, for graduation, actually, we um, created a student shout out video. So all the students could take a video of them, uh, 30 seconds or less, and it's gonna be played at graduation, I think, instead of having a single student speaker. And uh, prom was a blast. I know 
everyone I talked to enjoyed it because this was one of the key events to get everyone together. Just no matter what the DJ played, everyone was dancing. Uh, so yeah, it was it was great. Obviously, the uh, technology of today has made that uh, available and you were able to accomplish those things. I know a group that I am involved with, uh, we are going to, at the end of the month, be doing an international virtual convention with participants from over 200 geographic areas of the world. And for the annual international parade, each district in the, country, in the world had to do a 30 second video of your marching that was going to be all put together and I can't wait to see what the international parade is going to look like. So uh, just think if we didn't have all of this technology, uh, how worse it might have been instead of being able to accomplish uh, what, what has been accomplished. Pete, uh, if you could make one recommendation and you know we're all hopeful that you guys will be going to college in person in the fall, and schools will be open based on everything they're saying today. But if you could make one recommendation to put in the playbook, should something like this come up again, uh, what would you recommend be done as part of the process? Um, so one thing my school did, um, which frankly I thought was a great idea, um, they always made sure we were working um, throughout so we didn't really miss a step um and i think that's very important throughout the years to just keep going finding a way to keep going um that was kind of our theme throughout the pandemic was perseverance um so making sure that students can keep working whether it's simply just emailing them an assignment or hosting zoom classes and writing on a whiteboard algebra problems finding a way to keep the students active and finding a way to keep them involved in their curriculum is just the utmost important. And for you personally, uh, how would you say you came through it personally? There's been uh, some discussion about the well-being of the students at all grade levels of uh, having to deal with the uh, virtual uh, study. And uh, how did it affect you? Or did it? Um, so I wouldn't, I think definitely the second semester of, um, 2020, um, was definitely the most challenging year. We were fully remote, um, fully disconnected from our peers and from social interaction. But, um, I don't think this year I would have had any, gone any other way, honestly. Um, we were in person for most of it. Um, we were sharing, um, in-person time together. And while it was kind of different with all the restrictions put in place, um, a lot of new things came alight of that. Um, students started eating lunch outside, which in years past was never even an option at BG. Um, so we would all go find our nice place out in the sun and on campus and enjoy lunch together, kind of like picnic style. Um, so we just found new ways to make light of the situation this year, and that was truly special. Kate, what about you? What would be the one thing you would uh, recommend be put in the playbook for a similar situation going forward? I think kind of going off of um, keeping up with work and keeping that sort of consistency, I think that the thing that I personally, and I know some of my friends had struggled with, was that when we switched to hybrid or when we switched to people going in like person every day, the schedule changed around because we had been starting around nine and then went back to seven. And I think things like that, the that many changes was frustrating. And I think I would just recommend trying to keep things as consistent as possible. I know that with the timing, it was difficult because all of a sudden you had to start transporting kids to school with buses again. But I think that any sense of consistency, like with having a schedule um, at the end of 2020, when we first left school, it wasn't as structured of a schedule. We did still have Zooms with our classes, but it wasn't the entire school following, this is block one, this is block two. So I definitely think implementing that this year was helpful because every day I knew when things were happening and we were able to keep that sense of normalcy through 
something being consistent. So I think finding one or two things to stick to, to keep that consistency, if something like this were to happen again, is really helpful. And what about you? Were you personally affected uh, or did it affect you or were you just able to kind of roll with it? Um, because I was remote, definitely when, um, not so much with hybrid, but when people started going in every day and I was still remote, that was really hard being able to like seeing people going in and um, just, I personally couldn't go in. Um, so that was difficult. And I just think by the end of this year, I've just gotten so burnt out with trying to keep up with college applications, clubs, schoolwork, everything um, throughout this entire year has, I think I'm definitely more drained than I might've been in a normal year. And Asma, what about you? What would you put in the playbook going forward? And please, we don't have another one of these, but uh, I'm a strong believer in Murphy's Law. So what would you suggest? Um, I would suggest the same thing, consistency. Um, I know that the time change was really rough on me as well. Like in my first block class, I missed about 19 days because of that. <laughs> um, it's, it was really bad, but um, my, thank God my teacher was nice. Shout out to Duval. Um, but yeah, I think keeping things consistent and also exciting and fun, having some types of like, not always doing work classes, but also just like playing games during classes, stuff like that, because that makes you want to wake up, you know? at seven at seven a.m and also just like yeah I think consistency is key and that really helps another first uh, first period class uh, any other effects on you uh wait anything, what anything you found difficult uh at, at personally that uh you know gave you some concerns during the course of all of this, or were you able to get through? Um, I think like Kate, I was very burnt out towards the end. Like we went, we finished classes on June 4th, which was like about a few, like pretty recent. And um, till then we were doing work. Um, I took three AP classes. Mm -hmm. So one of my, my macroeconomics teacher was being difficult. Um, and yeah, I just, I feel like remote students didn't get as much, um, care for and online, it's definitely a different experience learning things. Um, if the teacher isn't always engaged with the remote students. And other than COVID, uh, what experience will you remember most from your high school day as well? Um, that's hard. I really, I really like, I really think I'll remember all the friendships and all the like, just nice people I've met throughout high school. Um, I became class president my junior year. Um, and before that, no shade or anything. Uh, our class didn't really do anything. And um, when I got elected class president, there was a little bit of tension. Um, people were saying like, not my president to me and stuff like that. But pulling through at the end, everyone started like actually seeing what I was doing and the good that our class became at the end, everyone became closer. And I really will not forget that, especially at prom. I feel like seeing everyone at prom and everyone just getting along with each other was amazing. and. I will never forget that. What about you, Kate? Uh, what what memory are you going to take from Nashville High School North going forward? Um, I think like similar to the friendships, just um, like big groups of us coming together. Junior year, we won Powder Puff, um, the football game and cheer. And just like seeing all of us come together, regardless of whether or not we had been friends before, but to work hard and pull that win out and things like that. Um, and I was a part of theater. So like putting shows together, just getting like giant groups of people together to put something together in the end and having it turn out um, similar to prom, just all of us coming together. I think that's what I would really take away is that regardless of whether or not we were friends yesterday in class or whether we've talked before, we're coming together now to put on this game or this play or something like that. And I think that was really important part of my high school experience. Peter? 
Yeah, um, I, I can't deny that friendship, uh, friendships and relationships that we've built um, throughout high school were definitely the most um, memorable, I think. I mean, there's always those funny little things that happen and um, happen at school or there's events that happen at school, but it's the people that you share those memories with. It's the people that you have those experiences with that created in the first place. Um, and I mean, if to put like a specific event out there, I think graduation um, was definitely one of those moments. Um, just being able to see the emotion that went through my class, what we went through at the end of it all. Um, it was just so gratifying to see how much everyone really cared for each other um, and how much we will care for each other going forward. Well, it's obvious the three of you cared a lot about your students and your senior classes, and it'll be one for the record books, uh, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, but uh, you've all pulled through, you've all graduated, and uh, you all seem to be headed uh, in the right direction for great careers. And uh, it will be interesting down the road to follow the class of uh, 2021, as well as the class of 2020, to see uh, at those first reunions, uh, whether the cohesiveness that COVID forced you to have uh, continues and uh, you get a better than average turnout uh, for those events. Well, in closing, uh, I'm gonna turn the tables on you guys a little bit, and I'm gonna ask you to ask each other questions uh, or a question about uh, anything to do with being senior class president, and the year you've just been through. So we'll start with uh, Asma, Asma to uh, ask either Pete or Kate a question. Okay, um, both of you, if you wanna answer this, uh, what did you guys do during COVID to kind of raise money to, uh, for your class or just throughout your year? What, what did you do? Um, for us at North, we tried to do things that were outside that we could do safely, safely. Like um, we did like food fundraisers at places where people could go on their own time if they were comfortable and things like that. Um, fundraising was definitely more difficult because we didn't have things like junior prom, but we tried to do smaller things like that um, and tried to add up a bunch of small fundraisers to make up for what we would have had if we had had J prom and other events. Yeah. Um. Yeah, away from fundraising, um, we did a outdoor carnival. Um, so during our lunch period, um, we kind of had like little like like gimmick games kind of outside. Like we had a like a balloon dartboard. Um, we had like a a little place to take pictures with your friends. Um, and it, it was during Spirit Week too, so everyone was in the the theme of the day. Um, so we kind of just like made the best out of um, the lunchtime, although like everyone would come at different times um, throughout the day or throughout the lunch period. Um, so that was just a little thing that we did. Kate, what would you like to ask them? Um, this is for both of you, but I know um, with COVID, it seemed like a lot of decisions had to be last minute. Are there any things that you would have gone back to change from this year that you maybe didn't make, not the right decision, but that you, think could have been better if you had done something different? Um, for the, I mean, not in terms of a student body decision, um, like a presidential decision, but um, when our school decided to lower our capacity down to 40%, um, which is really like 25 because of the full remote um, population of the school, um, there was really no one in school at the time um, so we were really just kind of, I mean, at times, like there would be one or two kids in a classroom. So there really was no purpose in dropping that low. Um, and I even reflected on this a little bit with my principal and he agreed that 40% was just not really conducive to in-school learning. Um, so kind of staying at that 60% or above mark was more than ideal. Yes, well. Um, so this year, making decisions was very much up to the student activities coordinator and um, our principal and admin. So I was very, like, as much as I wanted to make decisions, I think it was very much up to them because 
they had to be in contact with like the board of health um for a bunch of the events with graduation and prom although everyone was vaccinated or got tested we had to wear masks and stuff like that um so those were like required and those were kind of the biggest decisions that we had to make but um yeah so it was all up to them basically and Pete, you have questions for your counterpart. Yeah, so um, I know going to um, through the national school system, um, both of you didn't really get back into school fully um, until the recent months. Um, during those months prior to that, during the more online portion of your year, um, what was like one little thing or one thing that you guys really were like proud of that kind of came together? Um, while online? Um, I can go first for that. Um, that, so we had a spirit week virtually and this was when we were fully remote. Um, we did a thank your teacher Tuesday and in each class there was at least one person who organized like um, everyone in the class to hold up a thank you sign during class for the teacher. And we got tons of videos and pictures of like the teachers reacting to it, everyone holding up their thank you signs. Um, we actually, I think the idea came off of TikTok, um, which everyone was scrolling through, you know, during quarantine. And um, yeah, it was amazing. I did it in all of my classes and all of my teachers um, were very happy. One of my teachers, uh, one of my favorite teachers actually, he started crying a little bit. And it really touched my heart. So, yeah. So during our spirit week, we um, had people turn on their cameras during class to show that they were dressed up and you could win prizes from that. And it made teachers really happy to see people in per like their faces rather than just their blank screens. I think that was a way that we were able to do something fun for our class, but also help our teachers out. And that was, um, I think, one of the best things that we had done this year. Well, you all persevered and uh, all's well that ends well. Graduation behind you, summer jobs on tap, and then off to uh, college in the fall, actually in-person college. So I uh, wanna wish all of you the best of luck going forward. And uh, I'm sure that uh, based on what we got a brief glimpse at with all of you today, that uh, you're gonna do well and have great careers. Uh, ahead. So be safe and uh, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Ed. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. We've been talking today with the presidents of the senior classes of Bishop Girton, Nashville North, and Nashville South. Our guests have been uh, Peter Bogosian, Kate Connolly, and Asma Akbar. Thank you for watching Eye on Education. I'm Ed Leishis. Have a great summer and we'll see you soon.